Welcome to our final lesson in this series on the basics of Pennsylvania Dutch. This is our capstone. If you've been out of education for a while, capstone is a term that just means something that wraps everything up and ties it all together. And in this capstone, we're going to read uh, a couple verses from one of the most famous Pennsylvania Dutch poems ever written. That's by Henry Harbaugh, his poem Das Alt Schulhaus an der Grieg. The old schoolhouse on the creek. Uh, it became very famous at the um, towards the end of the 19th century. Very well known today by anyone who's done a little bit of reading in Pennsylvania Dutch. And it's time for you guys to read it as well. Now, before we do that, we'll look back a little bit at what we've done in these lessons. We've focused a lot on grammar. In fact, at this point, you probably know 85% of the grammar of Pennsylvania Dutch. You certainly know more than enough to start navigating your way through Pennsylvania Dutch documents. Now, the main thing, so we know lots of grammar, but we don't know that much vocabulary. If you've learned all the words in these lessons, maybe you know about 150 words, and that's not very many. It probably seems like a lot if you've learned them. But um, to carry on any decent conversation, you probably need to know at a beginning level, probably a thousand words and at an intermediate level, probably at least 2000 words. So um, we're a little ways away from that, but that's OK. And the reason that's OK is that we can use dictionaries to supply vocabulary for us. It's quite hard to use grammar books to supply grammar for us because um, it's just much harder to look things up in grammar books unless you know exactly what you're looking for, and you often don't. So knowing grammar, it ultimately, is when you're starting off in a language, is, I think at any rate, more important than knowing vocabulary because dictionaries can supply vocabulary relatively easy. If you see a word you don't know, just like if you see a word in English that you don't know, you can look it up. So, using vocabulary helps, we're ready to read some Pennsylvania Dutch. Now, the important thing to do is to download the handout. The handout has two uh, verses, the two last verses from Henry Harbaugh's The Salt Shoe House on de Grieg. And I really recommend that you give a go at translating it first before you watch the rest of this lesson, because I'm going to look at them and I'll translate these verses, but that's basically the answers. What you want to do is get the practice of translating these things on your own. And in the handout, I give the two verses, and I also give vocabulary helps at the bottom of the page. That's like your dictionary at the bottom of the page. I don't give words that were covered already in our lessons. So if you've forgotten those words, then you probably want to use padutchdictionary.com to look those words up. But between the words on the bottom of the page and padutchdictionary in the com, you should be able to cover all the vocabulary. And so this lecture, the, the reading here, will put your grammar to work. Everything we've been learning in these lessons, you'll start putting it into place. So do that first. The next slide, I'm going to start giving you the answers. Now, in this poem, Henry Harbaugh describes returning to his home village. The narrator in the poem has been out wandering the world, and now, as an older gentleman is returning home, he's standing in front of the old schoolhouse where he went to school as a child. That schoolhouse is built next to a creek. Here is our setting, and here is the second to the last verse. Goodbye, Alt Schulhaus, Echo Greist. Goodbye, goodbye, Trick. Oh, Schulhaus, Schulhaus. Muss ich gehen? Und du stehst not do all alle? Du Schulhaus an der Grieg. So looks at, let's look at that first um, clause. Goodbye, Alt Schulhaus. Goodbye is just a loan word, and um, 
Harbaugh has written it to reflect the pronunciation of his day of these kind of English loan words. Goodbye, simply modern English goodbye. Goodbye, alt schulhaus. Alt means old, and schulhaus means a schoolhouse. So, goodbye, old schoolhouse. Echo greicht. Goodbye, goodbye, zurück. Well, that verb there is greicht. That comes from Greisha, Grisha. So Greisht is just that present tense. And Greisha means to call. So Echo Greisht, Echo calls, goodbye, goodbye, Trick. And Trick just means back. So Echo calls, goodbye, goodbye, back. Or Echo replies, goodbye, goodbye. Oh, Schulhaus. Oh, schoolhouse. Schulhaus. Mm, schoolhouse. Those are very difficult to translate. Muss ich gay? And these are actually all words we know. The modal muss, meaning must or have to do something. Ich, meaning I. And gay, the infinitive, to go. Right? Muss is a modal. If you don't remember modals, go back and look at the lesson on modals. Muss ich gay? And it's a question. Must I go? Do I have to go? Is it necessary for me to leave? Our next verse. Und du stehst not do all alle. We've, in fact, I think we've seen the verb stay, stana, in our reading. Stay means to stand. Und du stehst, and you stay. Note means then or now or yeah, then I suppose probably best. Note, then, do means here, all means all, and alle means alone, alle, alone. Und du stehst, not do, all alle, and then you stand here, all alone. Du schulhaus an de Grick. You schoolhouse on means at or on or near or to. It can mean many different things in um, Deutsch. And Grick is a creek. You schulhouse on the creek or by the creek or near the creek. So translating the whole thing, or I'll maybe I'll read it one more time in Deutsch and then I'll translate the whole thing again. Goodbye, alt schulhaus. Echo greist. Goodbye, goodbye, trick. Oh, schulhaus, schulhaus. Muss ich gay? Und du stehst not do all alle? Du schulhaus an der Grick. Goodbye, old schoolhouse. Echo calls goodbye back. Oh, schoolhouse, schoolhouse, do I have to go? And you still standing here all alone? You schoolhouse on the creek. A bit sentimental, perhaps. Let's look at the next verse. So here's our final verse of the poem. There are many verses before the ones we're looking at. Oh, had ich dir leid, wo noch mir lebt. Ich schreibe euch noch des Stück. Ich warn euch, ich droh euch. Gebt doch auch und nehmt auf immer gut in euch des Schulhaus an der Grieg. So let's look at that first few words. Oh, had ich dir leid. Now, Hadicht comes from the verb. You'll see it there in the vocabulary in the bottom. Hadicht, Karicht. That means to, to listen. Ihr is a form of the um, of y'all. In some places, they say ihr instead of dir. So ihr means you or y'all. Light means people. So oh, Hadicht ihr light means oh, listen, you people. And Hadicht here is really the imperative. It's the telling them all to do it. Oh, Harricht, ihr Leid. Listen, all you people, you people. Wo noch mir lebt. Wo here, wo often means where, uh, where, sorry, as in where something is. But it can also be um, what you would call a um, relative pronoun, like our English who. And this is what it is in this case, it's who. Oh, listen, you people, who. Noch means after, and mir means me. And that verb at the end, lebt, 
comes from leva, gelebt, and leva means to live. So putting that whole phrase together, wo noch mir lebt, that would be who lived after me. So the whole sentence, oh harach dir leid, wo noch mir lebt, is, oh listen, you people who live after me. Next line. Ich schreibe euch noch das Stück. We've encountered that verb uh, schreibe there. That comes from schreibe, schreibe, means to write. Eich is the pronoun. Um, in this case, it's a dative as it works out. Um, for y'all. So ich schreibe euch means I write you all. Noch means kind of still or yet. Des means this. And shtick means um, a piece. It could mean a piece of pie, but it also often means a piece of literature or a uh, a piece of, of a song. Shtick is kind of like a thing. It could be a slice of pie. It could be a piece of literature. So ich schreibe euch noch der Stick means I'm writing you this piece of writing. I'm writing you this letter, maybe. Ich warne I warne means to warn. Ich warne I warn you. Dro, we understand ich. Ich dro I threaten you, or I give you a really strong warning. So ich warne ich, dro I. I warn you, I implore you, maybe. Gebt doch acht. So acht means kind of attention, and it's often combined with the word geva, which means to give, to kind of like pay attention, or to watch out, even. Gebt doch acht. Um, we could translate this, doch means like indeed, something like this. Like this. Gebt doch acht. Watch out. Something like that. Or pay attention. Und nemt of immer gut in acht. So nemt, that verb nemt, comes from nem agnoma, meaning to take. Of immer basically means always or forever. Gut means good. And in acht means kind of, once again, acht means attention. It literally means like inattention. So nemt in acht would mean take in attention, but that kind of means take care of. To take something in attention means to kind of take care of or to watch out for it. So this whole phrase then, on nemt of immer gut in acht, means take good care of, or always take good care of. That's the idea. Take good care of what? Well, our object is at the very end here. Des Schulhaus on the Greek. The schoolhouse on the Greek. So one more time, going reading it in the Deutsch and then translating back into English. O harech dir leid, wo noch mir lebt. Ich schreibe euch noch das Stück. Ich warne euch, drohe euch, gebt doch acht und nehmt auf immer gut in acht das Schulhaus an der Grieg. Oh, listen, you people who live after me. I write this piece of advice to you. I warn you, I implore you, pay attention and take Good care forever of this schoolhouse on the creek. There is our story and a, a rough translation. I'm not going to say it's poetical because I'm doing it on the spot. But a rough translation of those last two lines of the most famous poem in Pennsylvania Dutch. Henry Harbaugh's um, Das Alt Schulhaus on the Creek, the old schoolhouse on the creek. Now, uh, my, uh, my career is actually a literature professor. professor. I don't um, teach um, Pennsylvania uh, Dutch. That's certainly not my main thing. I do include some Pennsylvania Dutch in uh, various classes that I teach. But I am a literature professor is mainly what I do. And I couldn't resist the temptation to give you guys some core literature questions about these verses from Das Alt Schulhaus on the Greek. And as you guys probably remember from high school literature, the first step in literature is always asking about the symbols. So that's the first question. What does the schoolhouse symbolically represent? Obviously, literally, it's a schoolhouse. 
But let's just think about the situation. We've got a, 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 an older gentleman returning after years, traveling, working outside Pennsylvania Dutch land. And now he's finally returning to the village, the Pennsylvania Dutch village where he grew up. And in those days, right, a Pennsylvania Dutch village, everybody spoke Pennsylvania Dutch. So he's finally returning to this village where he grew up. And he's looking at this schoolhouse, which, of course, is where he spent his younger formative years. So, and it's where he met friends and spent time playing and learning. So, what does the schoolhouse represent symbolically? What are its emotional um, nuances? Now, the schoolhouse isn't anywhere. It happens to be on a creek. It's on a little stream where water is constantly flowing. How does this image of flowing water further the symbolism that's brought up by this old -er gentleman returning to the schoolhouse of his youth? And then, of course, he's saying goodbye, and Echo calls back in return. So, what does this image of Echo? Represent? How does this tie into the kind of image strands and the themes that are being symbolically built up by the schoolhouse and by the creek? How does echo function into this dialogue about youth and old age and memory? Why is it that the narrator must gay? He says, must ish gay? Do I need to go? What does that mean? Does that mean he just has to go lunch to go get lunch? I don't think so. What what does where's he going? This this older narrator who's returned to the schoolhouse of his youth. Where is he going? And he leaves the schoolhouse. And the schoolhouse it it, it it's standing all alay, all on its own. What? Emotion is conveyed by being all alone. How does that tie into the themes and the symbols and the imagery we've seen so far? Now, he tells, he asks the people who come after him, he says, um, to take good care of, right, this alt schulhaus gut in Ochnema, to dig good care of the old tool house. Well, what would that mean like symbolic? Like literally, I guess that means putting on a coat of paint or something like that and repairing the roof. But what does it mean symbolically? To take this, to um, cherish the schoolhouse. And why does the narrator choose to close the poem by addressing ihr leid, wo noch mir lebt, you people who live after me? How does this address to the next generation tie into the themes of youth and old age? And I'm going to even tell you death and um, passing on generations. How does that tie into the notion of language and Pennsylvania Dutch? A language that even in Harbaugh's time amongst much of the population was being put under increasing pressure. So uh, I've, we've kind of covered that next question. How does this address fit into the theme of the poem? And then the final question, is this poem really about a schoolhouse? Obviously, the schoolhouse is one of the main images. And I'm going to tell you the answer. That one, the answer is no. The poem is not really about a schoolhouse. The poem is about old age and death and memory and hoping that traditions live on. It's about all those things. Hopefully I've awakened your interest that you might want to go back and um, read the rest of the poem. It's all uh, online. If you do a bit of uh, smart Google searching, you should be able to find it. Hopefully you've enjoyed learning uh, the basics of Pennsylvania Dutch. Hopefully you've been able to make a little bit of headway in this poem by Henry Harbaugh. And hopefully you've seen that how learning the basics of a language can start opening up new things for you to read and explore and think about. It's been a pleasure preparing these materials for you all. 
I hope you uh, stay healthy. Box scoop.